So far, so good. We have persisted in pestering some protons into pinpointing their position using the perverse properties of nuclear magnetic resonance. That's all very well, but how do we turn that information into a useful image? The tiny magnetic field re-emitted by the proton as it sinks back to its previous spin is received in the MRI machine as a weak radio signal. The properties of electricity, magnetism and radio waves are closely related and can be regarded as more or less the same thing. In fact, the MRI machine faintly resembles early radar technology in which radio waves are used to detect hydrogen instead of aeroplanes. Detecting hydrogen, however, is a singularly useless activity. We already know the body contains vast amounts of hydrogen in water. The clever bit comes in turning the return signal into a three-dimensional image. To do this, a weaker magnetic field is superimposed on the stronger field. This weaker field creates a magnetic gradient across the body, so that two separate protons will be exposed to a slightly different magnetic field strength. When the fields are switched off, each proton re-emits its signal as a slightly different frequency which is received in the detector at a slightly different time. Of course, the detector isn't sensitive enough to find single protons. In fact, in a typical minimum resolution of one millimeter cubed, there are over 21,000 million 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 of them. However, for the sake of simplicity, we will imagine there are only two. To work out exactly where the protons are in three-dimensional space, the transmitter and detector are rotated around the body. To use our radar analogy, this is like rotating the radar station around the planes. As this absurdly out-of-scale animation shows, each time the protons are pestered with radio waves, the return signals occur at slightly different times and from a different angle relative to the detector. Each proton's frequency will change slightly as the detector moves. We now have a set of numbers for frequency and time for different parts of the body. The distance from the detector can then be back calculated to make a three-dimensional block of data. This uses a mathematical process called Fourier analysis, a type of integral calculus. This may look complicated, but is in fact a form of glorified positional triangulation, combining all the data from all the return signals. The computerized calculations generate a stream of numbers to construct a computer model of hydrogen density. This density map shows the relative amount of water in tissues, and therefore muscle, bone, blood vessels and other tissues can be seen clearly. Once the data block is cooked and all the data has been compiled, the image can be sliced electronically to make a series of cross sections through the body. Typically this is done horizontally and vertically. Despite all the technology and mathematics that went into making the image, it still requires considerable experience of anatomy and pathology to read the image and diagnose a problem.